All right, so I want to start with the um, kind of important questions that we might want to ask ourselves when we're studying stellar evolution. And so to put this idea, you know, around something concrete, I chose to look at the Hyades star cluster here. So um, this largest uh, red giant star here, Aldebaran, is not part of the star cluster, so we'll go ahead and ignore that. And now just take a minute and look around at this um, image at the other stars that are part of the star cluster. You might notice a few, you know, similarities between many of the stars. Maybe you notice some key differences between specific stars. And we can kind of pick out, you know, a, just a handful of stars in the cluster and then ask, start asking ourselves questions about these stars and about the cluster. So some of the things that we might ask about these four stars, which we're going to return to throughout the rest of the class today, is maybe which one of these stars is the hottest star. Maybe we want to know which of these stars is the oldest. And maybe, and this is a similar question, but different, which of these stars is the closest to death? So these are some of the questions we can ask our ourselves when we're looking at a, a star cluster um, and uh, looking at the differences between stars. We can kind of use this cluster as a natural laboratory for asking these questions of the stars and figuring out what drives the differences to the answers of these questions. All right, so we'll come back to these questions um, near the end of class. Okay, so with this in mind, um, let's talk about the process of stellar evolution and tie it back to some of the things we've already talked about. So um, the entire process of stellar evolution of a star aging away from the main sequence is driven by changes in its core. So specifically, let's um, think about what the star is burning. So inside the core of stars, what is the star converting the hydrogen fuel into? Okay, I'm seeing most votes for A, that the hydrogen fuel is being converted into helium. And that's exactly right. So that's the first step of fusion in a star that is similar to the mass of our sun. Actually, all stars start by burning hydrogen into helium. Uh, they can actually generate all of these other elements later in their lifetime. But the first step is hydrogen into helium. So that's the fusion process we've studied so far. And there's a consequence of this um, fusion process, which is that some of the hydrogen at the center turns into helium. And it starts by uh, being, you know, a small amount of helium, what we call helium ash, left in the core of the star. But over time, more and more of that hydrogen fuel is used up. And so that core of helium ash grows and grows relative to the entire uh, core of the star. And eventually, the uh, part of the star that's hot enough to fuse hydrogen into helium no longer contains enough hydrogen to fuse. All right, so um, at this point, the star is in trouble because now it has run out of its hydrogen fuel, at least in its core. Okay, so as a result of this, the core has to change in response. It can no longer um, you know, maintain an equilibrium if it doesn't have any fuel left to burn, right? So there has to be something that changes as a result of this. That should have been review for you based on what we talked about before related to hydrostatic equilibrium in the sun. So, um, right, so once the star burns through its hydrogen, the core is going to have to change. So I want to be able to um, kind of fill in these blanks. What happens inside the, the star? What happens to the size of the core based on what happens to the pressure and the gravity inside? So remember hydrostatic equilibrium is the balance between the pressure pushing out. Uh, this pressure is generated by the fusion process and the gravity pressing in. And that gravity is always pressing in. So if there's a change in the fusion rate, that's gonna change the pressure pushing out. So if the star burns up all of its hydrogen fuel and leaves behind helium ash, if it's not yet hot enough for helium to fuse, this happens at a higher temperature than hydrogen fusion happens at, then the pressure is gonna go down. So I'm gonna illustrate that here by, you know, these little purple arrows, they're gonna get skinnier because the pressure is gonna get smaller, but the gravity has not changed. There's still the same total amount of mass in the overlying layers of the star pushing in. And so as a result, the core is going to contract until the star reaches a level where the pressure inside the new smaller volume is equal to the gravity pressing in. 
So the core gets compressed after the star runs out of fuel. Um, eventually, it may be compressed to the level where now the star is able to start fusing helium. And actually, this process can occur multiple times as the star runs out of multiple different types of fuel. Uh, but this generally only works for higher mass stars. OK, anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So our core here is getting compressed because the pressure is smaller due to the decrease in fusion. OK, so what happens as the core compresses? Does it heat up or does it cool down? All right, most votes for A. Yeah, the core, um, as it compresses, it heats up because the uh, gas, as the gas gets uh, shoved into a smaller volume, then the molecules are, um, sorry, atoms are uh, moving faster on average, bumping into each other more often. And so the overall temperature, it goes up. And so as the temperature goes up, that causes a, a shell of hydrogen around the helium ash core to start burning. So it, it gets hot enough not to fuse helium right away, but to start fusing hydrogen in a new layer outside the core where it hasn't been fusing before. So there's fresh fuel just outside the core. And as soon as that area gets hot enough, it can ignite. And once this hydrogen shell starts burning, it actually starts burning quickly. So the hydrogen um, shell starts to um, increase the heat in the overlying area of the star. Um, so the, the rate of fusion is also faster because for one thing, there's actually a lot of fuel because of the large area of this shell, uh, the large, it fills a large volume because it's at a large radius. And then also because the core is hotter then the fusion process is faster. So because the core has compressed and heated, then it, it not only ignites the hydrogen shell, but it's at a higher temperature. So the fusion rate is faster. So all of these factors together mean that the hydrogen shell burns quite quickly. Okay, so this is the basic, um, this is the basic piece of evolution that we need to understand to figure out why stars age away from the main sequence. So I'm going to return to this, but um, I want to take a little brief detour into the idea of star clusters, because these star clusters are going to be where we see this process happening and where we can compare stars of different masses as they age. <laughs> 